Aloha. Today I thought I'd take you on a little art tour of my condo here in Maui. It just so happens that my three favorite pieces of art were created by my friend Pat Hentenar Torley. I went to high school with Pat and she was an artist then. And I don't know that I've ever admitted this to her, but I'm intimidated by people who really are great artists. I just sit in front of a blank piece of paper and I don't know how to begin, but she does. And speaking of paper, she is a world famous paper artist. And you will see a, a little bit of how she created these pieces. But first, let's look at them. The first piece I wanted to show you is the one that's right across from my sofa. So I look at it every day for hours <laughs> every day as I sit on my sofa, noodling away on my computer. It's a palm tree blowing in the wind and it is so beautiful and striking. It is, um, just for perspective, you can see the surfboard over here and my lamp. It's, it's huge and magnificent. It's the biggest uh, piece that Pat ever produced. The second one I want to share is an image of Koi. It's right next to my bed and I get to enjoy it every evening and every morning when I wake up. Koi are a perfect uh, match for the medium of paper making that Pat uses. And the last one is on the other side of the bed. The third piece is called the Chilangalang Sisters. It's me in the center with a group of Hawaiian women who I used to play music with. And we would have, we would laugh and we'd play half the night. It was so much fun. And Pat was visiting at a time when we did that one evening. So, uh, hi Pat, good to see you. Hi Bonnie. <laughs> I, I'm here. I'm here in uh, Maui, and you are in the Hague in the, the Netherlands, right? In Rijswijk, next to the Hague. Yeah. But I think yeah. people might might uh, know Delft better with all their Delft wear. Mm -hmm. But we have a 400 year old farm, so we were here first. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm making a little video about the your art that I have here in my condo in Maui. The palm tree picture. I've got a uh, picture of Koi and then the Chilangalang sisters. Yep. And I was hoping that you could share with people a little bit about how you make these images because they're extraordinary. They have a depth to them and a organic feel to them that a painted picture doesn't have. So can you explain a little bit of how they're made? Yeah, I don't know how, how often the people listening have ever seen things that other paper artists are doing, but it's not like that either. Because when you're, when you're painting a picture, you begin with a piece of paper and then you work towards yourself, you know, doing your, your ink or your crayons or your painting. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with paper, most people make the sheet of paper first and then do things on top of the sheet of paper too, as, as you would do with regular paper. But I'm not starting with a piece of paper. I, I, it's more, almost more like a sculptor that isn't working in a marble or whatever, but is building it up as it goes along. You start mm -hmm. with what's going to be seen first. That's what you start with in my technique. And then you add layer after layer behind it and the layers mix in with each other a little bit. So it becomes a very fluid going from color to color. It, there's not a, 
a line particularly, but there can be, if I decide to take my knife in there and, and shove the pulp out of the way, I can, yeah, just like sculpture, you're, you're molding it in, in uh, different heights. When I was in your um, studio, uh, I noticed that you had many different pots of paper pulp. So you basically are, are pouring and applying the different colors yes areas for your design and and i know you're working on a vacuum table i don't know if many people know what that is but it to me it looks like a screen that then a large screen that has a kind of a vacuum underneath it and it sucks yeah, the it, pulp onto it we have something that that um has makes the vacuum get everywhere there are various screens and the, the spread the vacuum all the way around because so, you want equal vacuum everywhere. You don't want just one piece sucked to the to tube. So it's mm -hmm. a complicated table. It's, mm -hmm. our, it's our own, we've, we've, we've made the, ourselves because it was something so weird. There are vacuum <laughs> tables that are, that, that work with just sucking a piece of paper down on to hold it still. Mm -hmm. but that's sure. not like this. And the pots of, of the uh, pigmented pulp can be almost anything. We, we use different, I'm talking about we because my, my husband does it too, but he doesn't do flat pieces, he does three-dimensional pieces. But anyway, with the colors, first you, you grind the fibers and then by grinding the fibers, you're also opening up a whole lot of the fibers and then you color them and then I have basic colors from big, big buckets. And then I mix all these different colors from the basic colors, but they're not paint. They're all colored fibers. Yeah. So yeah, I have a lot of things of pulp. <laughs> and I think, and I think you even do things that I, uh, that are rather symbolic because I, I, like, I believe that when you made a couple of these images, you took some of the red dirt, which is yeah. characteristic of this area, um, home with you and ground it in with the pulp to make these images. I think as many women feel like they're witches on the one, you know, the little witch blood in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I love them. They're so alive. And, and when you describe how you do this upside down and backwards and you've got to put all the details lay all the details down first like with the women you know their their facial features maybe go go down first and then you build their face on yeah top of that and so everything that's in the foreground goes down first and everything that's in the background goes down after that and it would be really hard for me to think in that way, but over time you've become an expert at it. Yeah, although I don't try to get them um, exactly like people look like. That's too boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. You put a lot of their personality into their into their their fibers. You're showing yes. their fibers. <laughs> That's, um, and actually the Tulang Lang sisters, you really captured them. And I noticed in the they video- were very special, very special. <laughs> right, just such dynamic women. And you talked about taking many different photographs. And uh, when you do, when you're gonna do pieces and uh, somehow you capture the personality of the person or the personality of the, the fish, they really do come alive in your, in your, uh, in your pieces. You can really get to the heart of things. Yeah. And I'm, I'm inspired by so many things. So, you know, just walking through our garden and mm -hmm. you can't do it all. You, you, just, you have to make choices. Mm -hmm. And I think now as I get older, I just want to look at the things and myself and not try to show everybody else what I'm seeing because it, it's so intricate. You're, 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 you know, what you've done is extraordinary. Yeah. And 
and uh, it's been a real gift to me. I have three pieces here in Maui and I have more at uh, my home in the Napa Valley. And I just love them. I'm glad you do. Yeah, I just love <laughs> them. And so thank you for the gift of it to me well, and to all the people. It. Yeah, all the people that have them. Okay, so we're gonna say um, goodbye to you now. I'll, I'll see you again when we yeah. have our high school uh, Zoom together. Right. And so it's been great talking with you, Pat. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> mm -hmm.